All right. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Um, let's see here. So I'm gonna try to keep an eye on things in the chat and so forth. But if you are joining live, then you know, please say hi. Let me know what you're up to. So today I'm gonna be doing uh, some print ad layout within InDesign. Uh, you can see I have Photoshop open up right here just because it's prettier to look at than a blank InDesign document, right? But what I've got going in InDesign is just an A4 kind of thing uh, in terms of the size. It's only got one page. It's, a, it's meant to be a one-page ad. And uh, yeah, I got my layers open here. I got my properties ready to go. So the idea that I have for this is going to be uh, an ad for coffee. It's the morning. I have coffee every morning. It seems like one of those kind of rituals that <clears throat> has persisted throughout the pandemic for the last, I don't know, 18 months or so. Um, where at night I grind coffee, in the morning I make the coffee and drink the coffee. So coffee is going to be perfect. For this. Hello, Brendan. How are you? Hope you're well. Thanks for joining today. Yeah, so let's see here. Um, I have... I did a little brainstorming first. I've got some notes. I'm going to call it Bold Brew Coffee. So Bold Brew is going to be the, the brand name. And I've got a little tagline. Awaken your senses except nothing less. Sounds good for coffee, right? And there's a couple of things we need to do in terms of prep. So one of those things was to grab some, some photography that I can incorporate into this ad. So I have grabbed some stuff from Adobe Stock. Um, this one here is very nice and simple. Um, it's just a <laughs> looking down over a little cup of coffee or espresso perhaps and then this one is a more kind of traditional black drip coffee sort of thing so I'm gonna see which one of these might work I'm gonna pull both of them into my InDesign document and we can use that as a starter right so yeah hello Sean how are you today all right so what I'm gonna do is uh, uh, inside of Photoshop here, I'm gonna grab my object selection tool, which, there we go. So I was using the magic wand tool before. So let's see what object selection does to, to this. I'm, I'm not sure how it's gonna work with this particular coffee cup, because there is such a, such a shadow being cast, like a really dark shadow. It might see the shadow as part of the object, but we'll see what happens. Oh, actually, pretty good. Let's check in my navigator here. See how things are going. So yeah, I mean, it's not perfect. We can see down here there's a little bit of um, a little bit of problem, but that that that's okay. We can we can fix that. Um, what I'm going to do is just create a mask on this. So I've got that layer selected. Let's mask it, and then we can see exactly. <laughs> you know what the issues are here so <clears throat> what I can do is um, just choose a brush and let's paint some white over to you know just kind of smooth things off a bit so yeah hardness let's take it to like 20% and then if we do ooh, no 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 that's not gonna work let's <laughs> Take that down a bit more. I've got something goof in here. I'm not sure what. Oh, I always do that. So over here, and it's like an opacity slider, right? Where it's like, you know, different Adobe applications, they'll term it like alpha or transparency or opacity or something else. 
And it's always kind of weird to, to remember like what's what. Of course, in Photoshop here, we get this little indicator. It shows you how soft or hard it is. So I was looking at like 20% thinking it was gonna end up like this, where really I need to go the other side of the scale. There we go, that's, that's what I'm looking for. So it's really easy to get tripped up by some of this stuff if you're not careful. But, you know, the, the object selection tool did a pretty good job just going through and, um, you know, making that initial selection. I'm just going in and kind of cleaning things up a bit. And I'm just using the trackpad on my MacBook here, which I really like using the trackpad for stuff, but, um, you know, for a lot of this stuff, like something like a, a little Intuos tablet and pen might work a little better. But um, yeah, we make it. I used to use that all the time. I, I don't use it so much anymore, especially with my students when I'm teaching, just because I like to work with the same kind of, um, you know, the same kind of tools and hardware that my students have access to, you know? So they don't feel like I'm, they don't, so they don't feel like they can't do what I'm doing simply because I have different hardware than them, right? Um, yeah, that's, that's acceptable, I think, right there. It's looking pretty good. So Sean mentions you could take it into select and mask and smooth out the mask. Yeah, yep. So if I went to uh, select and mask right here, you can see in the properties panel, and I love the properties panel in any of these apps. But if we go into select and mask, it's gonna bring us into the whole select and mask workspace, like Sean mentions. And here we get all sorts of little tools to tweak the mask and also a properties panel that's directly, you know, it exposes all the properties of our mask. So if I wanted to fiddle with this, um, I could. This is sort of a new, I mean, it's not new, but it's kind of a newer, newer feature on here. Uh, but if you look down here, there is like a smoothness slider, things like that. If I pull that all the way up, let's see if that, eh. I'm gonna have to zoom in a bit. Let's go into our, let's get something real crunchy here. So we can see these crunchies, right? Yeah, so you can see that smoothed it out pretty good. Um, the big problem though for me was in my original mask, um, aside from the smoothing bits, it actually ate into some of this, which you could fix that here too, of course. So there's, you know, ways and ways and ways of, of doing these things, right? So here it's created a new, um, an entirely new masked layer for me with the mask intact. So I've actually got both of these now. I've got the older one here, the chunky one, and then I've got the uh, the smoother one here too. So there we go. Now this one over here is gonna be a lot easier, I bet, uh, for object selection tool to, uh, to take care of. So let's go ahead and just make a nice little selection. So you'd see that that was a lot faster and you could even just use the ellipse tool, right? So right here, the other, uh, ellipse selection, elliptical marquee tool. Um, and since this is a perfect circle, um, that could probably get it pretty good. So, uh, and we could also use remove background here too, right? So again, additional things to do. Actually, let's go ahead and, I don't wanna sidetrack too much, but let's let's do both just to see the difference, right? It's sometimes fun to see the, the difference in sort of similar tools and workflows. Some of these things, see what works best. So I'm gonna mask, just like I did last time. And yeah, th that worked out pretty good. Much better than the last one because of course it's a much cleaner background. But let's go ahead and just go here and just click remove background, see what happens. Yeah. So that did a pretty good job too. Actually, both of these are fairly, fairly equal. I could use either of these uh, inside of my advertisement. So it's about time to do that now. So what I'm gonna do is, let's see. Yeah, 
And InDesign, you know, is one of those things that, you know, oh, let me grab my mask. <laughs> All right, so let's, instead of doing that, we could always commit the mask to render it all. Um, that's probably gonna be the easiest thing. And then I'll just kind of copy it. So let's go in here and let's see. Come here, buddy. Um, Oh, there we go. Flatten image. Yes, please. Oh, of course it took. Mm, that's not going to work because it took the transparency away. However, if I select both these layers, let's just do it like this. Layer. And let's uh, merge those layers. And there we go. Now I get my nice merged layer. Right click on the mask. Let's do it with this one. Oh, jeez. Yeah. It's funny, the different things here. So this is another thing with Photoshop, like, you know, depending upon where you click in a spe specific layer, um, you're gonna get different options. You can see each one of these things here, you know, is particular to either the overall layer, the, uh, the image itself, or the mask. So I thought I did click on the mask, but apparently I didn't. So apply layer mask is what I was looking for. And there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and copy and paste this stuff into InDesign. There's that. And then we're going to grab the other one too. And then we're going to be done with, with Photoshop. So uh, hey, anybody who's, uh, I see a lot more people here now, so uh, welcome. And, uh, you know, let me know what you're up to in the chat. I always like interacting with the chat on these, it's fun. And it's part of the whole deal, right? That's, that's why you do something like this instead of just a... Uh, you know, just a big recording that you pop on a YouTube or something. And I do put these on YouTube as well, so the replays are available here. Um, but, uh, you know, they're also on YouTube. So yeah, here's my, my two bitmap images here in my, in my document. So they're in there, but right now I don't really, um, I'm gonna kind of decide exactly which, um, you know, which, which, which of these coffee cups to use. But before I do that, let's talk about some fonts, right? Oh, so Sean mentions uh, just finished working on tomorrow's stream. So that's cool. What's your stream about tomorrow, Sean? And by the way, if you click on on Sean's little face in the chat, you should be able to get directly to his, uh, um, Behance page. <laughs> Sometimes these things really escape me. Um, it is early. So yeah, there'll be fonts. I've already picked out a couple fonts I want to use, but you know, if you do, if you haven't made, made use of Adobe fonts, um, it's really, really useful because the fonts all sync to your computer. You can use them in other stuff, so it doesn't have to be Adobe applications that you use Adobe fonts in. They show up in you know Microsoft products and and all the rest, uh, like Microsoft Word, uh, PowerPoint, and so forth. Um, they're installed and appear just like regularly installed fonts. So what I've done, let me look here, my Adobe fonts. So these are ones that I have synced to my computer. And there's two that I'm looking for here. Um, and they're down here. So this one right here, Herencia. Um, this one I thought was, was that it? Doesn't look right. We've got Agenda here, 
and rock grotesque. I don't think these are quite right. Yeah, rock grotesque and agenda. Herencia, what did I use that for? Hmm. Well, I don't think I even need that. I don't... Yeah, it's looking weird. I'm going to actually disable that one. I'm going to unsync that. So yeah, I'm going to use agenda for my, uh, you know, my big headline. And I'm going to use this rock grotesque bold. Oh no, grotesque bold is for the headline. Agenda is for the, the uh, additional text there. Yeah. All right, cool. So I made sure to sync these yesterday. Because um, lots of times, especially, and I notice this when I'm when I'm teaching sometimes too, um, you know, I'll show Adobe fonts and I'll be like, yeah, just go in and you know sync some fonts. Sometimes it takes a long time for them to actually like trigger that sync for whatever reason. Um, and I like to have things ready, so they are ready. So we're looking at agenda and rock grotesque for this. All right, so Sean's. Uh, stream tomorrow, um, he mentions that he's been streaming about Adobe's project Create Waves, an ocean conservation project. That's cool. I haven't heard of that. So hashtag Create Waves. Um, oh, what was I just thinking? Oh, well, it'll come back to me. All right, so let's see here. So yeah, bold brew is what I'm calling this thing. So what we're gonna do first is just kind of, you know, let's just reset our our foreground and background or our fill and our stroke here. I'm talking Photoshop uh, terminology again. Uh, it's fill and stroke inside of InDesign, just like with Illustrator. So let's go ahead and find my type tool. And I'm just gonna click and type. Uh, bold brew. Let's make that all caps. Then I'm also going to go ahead and make two more. And right now we're just adding the copy to it, right? We're not really focused on, you know, the layout, the position, the size of these things. We're going to do that right after I get all of the different components in, because then they'll all be together and we can, you know, place them in relation to one another. So, Let's see, awaken your senses. <laughs> it's like such cliche coffee messaging here, <laughs> but that's okay. Except nothing last. All right, so super, super uh, flat here. Let's apply those fonts that we chose from Adobe Fonts. So again, agenda and rock grotesque. Oh yeah, no, Sean, feel free to pop it in the chat. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I pop stuff in the chat all the time and I totally don't mind if, if other people do that too. Um, let's see. So I'm looking, good old Minion Pro here. <laughs> so we've got uh, filtered by Creative Cloud and I'm looking for, I believe it's agenda. And I want to use agenda regular, bold brew. And then these two, I can just select them both at the same time. And we're going to use that rock, R-O-C, grotesque. So you can see, as I was saying, these are already, you know, um, Oh, actually, I, 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 did it, I did the inverse again. I keep on thinking agenda is the actual headline, but it's not. So I'm gonna do agenda light for those and rock grotesque for this one. There we go. Bold brew, super bold. Mm. All right. So this is coming out. Oh yeah, so Sean has um, paste in that URL there. 
Um, and so th here's the thing, like th one of the reasons I always repeat the things that people say in the chat is simply because um, on replays, the chat doesn't show up, right? So um, yeah, I'm not sure if my mine shows up any different. So if I copy and paste that there, um, it might show up a little different because I think the host has, uh, I think mine can be clickable, whereas, you know, if, if somebody who's in the viewership uh, just kind of pastes a URL in there, I think it just comes across as text. But um, so hopefully that's helpful. All right, bold brew. All right, another thing I want to have is I want to have a nice gradient background, um, kind of like what we saw in Photoshop with uh, this guy here. So this had a nice, you know, a nice sort of smooth, uh, smooth sort of pinkish orange salmon -y type type color. Um, I don't want that color in there, and it's probably not big enough for the entire ad, but I do want it to be uh, <laughs> nicer looking than just straight white, right? So let's go ahead and actually uh, make some some changes here. So. If I go in and, you know, just create a basic rectangle, just the entire size of my document, <coughs> and there it is. So here's my rectangle in the layers panel. And of course, it doesn't look all that great right now. It's just straight black, um, not the best. So what we need to do is change some colors. So if we look in color here, we can change from all these different types of colors. I'm gonna do uh, CMYK, so I can select easily from any of these colors here. So we could do just a flat background if we wanted to, but I, I actually want to create a, uh, I don't know, maybe do something a little, little more special, right? Um, let's look in here. At my fill. So right now we're looking at swatches. We've got our, our color right here, which is very similar to the color panel that I opened up there. But then of course, we're able to create a gradient out of this, apply it to the frame. Right now, um, there is no gradient applied, so it's a solid color. Um, I want just a linear gradient. And there we go, we get a hideous <laughs> gradient that is uh, you know these particular colors. However, if I double click on any of these, um, I then get the ability to um, make adjustments uh, to any of this. So like, you know, if I pick that color there, then there we go, that color gets applied. Um, and gosh, I'm not sure. I want it to be like, not like brown. Coffee is brown, black, right? Um, I need more contrast to it than that. I don't know, maybe we should do like blue or something. I don't know, because like blue brown is sort of a you know, uh, but I don't know. Maybe just a light tan or something a little rusty. So let's see. I'll choose a color and just kind of tweak some of these parameters up here. Uh, CMYK. Of course, if you haven't worked with uh, CMYK before, it's cyan, magenta, yellow, and the K is black. So I'm just tweaking these until I get what I'm looking for here. Then you can click on this guy again. Click on the black. And make some choices when it comes to black. CMYK once again. And I want it to be pretty similar. I don't want like a real huge difference in my gradient. So <laughs> what I probably should have done is actually made a swatch and then applied that same swatch to each of these and then tweaked, tweaked this one. But it's fine. This will work out.
So how are we looking here? Oops, no, I don't need another rectangle, thanks. Hmm. Yeah, it's all right. Just adjusting the angle here of my swatch. There we go. Something like that. It's negative 70. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in here a bit more so it's a bit bigger for everyone. You know what's really nice to see is you know, for a few weeks ago, I was having some real issues with uh, streaming. <laughs> I kept on getting like really poor quality uh, connections and everything. But it looks like that has resolved itself. Uh, last week was just fine, and this week looks to be just fine too. So that is perfect. All right. So let's see, what else do I need to do here? I need to rearrange these layers. I'm going to Put my rectangle, let's drop that way to the back and lock it down. Then I've got my, my various graphics here. And you know what? I think I will use that other one. This one right here. I just like, it looks more like my coffee. <laughs> so I, uh, I always take my coffee just like completely black um, I don't add anything to it and uh, yeah let's change the size of this frame and now of course the contents a bit uh, a bit chopped so we can change the fitting on that We'll just place it right there. And now we can focus more on our text. So I'm going to place this somewhere on here. I want a lot of nice white space. Make that a little bigger, center it, adjust the text frame. And something I always like about InDesign is if you know, you don't have anything selected. Then you do a uh, Shift W. You get this. Um, so, you know, of course, InDesign has all these guides and things all over the place. Um, this preview is actually um, the preview is a full screen preview. It reduces all the clutter of the different guides and things like that, and it makes it a lot easier to see how your your item actually looks. Right. So I always enjoy previewing my stuff um, in that manner. So here, let's go ahead and change the color of this too. Right now it's straight black. I want it to be more the color of the actual coffee, right? So let's see. I'm gonna select my text so you can see my fill color here. Uh, there we are. And actually let's Go ahead and where's my, there we go. So we've got our color theme tool or eyedropper tool. Um, let's change it to eyedropper and sample that color. Well, all right, we'll just do it like that. Let's add this theme to my swatches. Double click on the 
this guy again. And I actually don't have my swatches open. So let's go to window, color, and swatches. Well, there we go. Now we got a bunch of swatches here. I don't need it like that though. There is my theme that I just used, that I created. Gosh, I don't know why that's so, so big. <laughs> I don't need it that large. All right, so anyway, I've got it in my swatches now. If we look down here, I've got my colorful theme. And it's just sampled a bunch of stuff from my coffee. So let's go ahead and, uh, all right, I've got this selected still. Right now we got a fill of black, but I get access to my swatches right here. So I can go in and change this. I'm gonna select this swatch right there, but I'm also going to um, modify it because I do want it to be darker. I want it to be almost black, but not quite. Let's clean all this up. And if we unclick that, there we go. So that's looking pretty nice. Man, you know, I'm thinking now like bold brew, like maybe like have bold and then brew right under it. Um, just make it like super bold brew. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we'll just, let's leave it like this for now and We'll just kind of see how, how things work out, right? And maybe it's okay. So these two, I need to figure something to do with them. So I definitely need it to be, uh, what's it called, legible. <laughs> right now it's much too small. And I need this to be a different color too. Let's actually go in here and go back in. This might be too light. Let's see how it looks. It might be too light, but maybe if I put, I don't know. It's too light. Let's use that as a foundation to just bring it up a little bit. So this is gonna be much more of that coffee color, right? So, um, you know, sometimes, especially in like an espresso, you get like the foam and it can have sort of a yellow, orange, tan, thing about it, right? Let's add this to my swatches because then I can select this and uh, just go in and there he is right there. So that one's not part of a theme, so it shows up in a different spot in my swatches panel, of course. Hello, Franco, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And anybody who's joining, again, welcome, welcome. I'm gonna add a little bit of drop shadow on both of these pieces of text. Let's preview it. And that's a terrible drop shadow right there. We need to dial this back like 800% here. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is a uh, little bit of drop shadow. Um, you know, maybe it can make it look a little better, right? Let's take the size down and change the distance. Make it really, 
really tight in there, right? 0 0.2. Ah, that's what I'm looking for. And what color is that drop shadow? Well, it's just black. Let's change the, uh, we'll blur it a little bit, not too much. Take the opacity down somewhat. You know, I'm kind of wondering with the drop shadow on there if um, you know maybe I could actually use that other color that I initially grabbed for this let's, let's see how this looks yeah there might be a little too much too much contrast in that though Hmm. Need some more yellow. Let's use the, the yellow is what I wanted to do in the first place, so whatever. Works out. All right, now they both have the same swatch applied. So all I need to do is tweak the drop shadow that's on both of these. Make sure I got the right stuff selected here. And uh, Just play with this a little bit. So I'm thinking maybe 0 0.4, 0 0.04 rather. And I just need a little bit, wow. I just had a bunch of weird little things pop up inside of my Behance here. Oh, Adobe Live is now simulcasting your live stream to their audiences. Wonderful. Thank you, Adobe Live. <laughs> That's great. That happened to me one other time, I think. Um, and I've been, I think it was since uh, last August when I started doing this. So Adobe for Education, you know, they approached a few of us uh, who teach in universities and, you know, K-12 institutions and so forth. And they wanted to start up, you know, a, a featured stream, a featured set of streamers for education specifically. So that's how I got involved in this on Behance. And uh, yeah, so it's been almost a year since I started this. Definitely the quality of my streams, I think, has, has gone up quite a bit. Um, a lot of it has to do with timing, though, too, depending on how much interaction you get in the chat and so forth. Um, so mornings seem to be a pretty good time right here. Um, so hey, RB. Hope you are well. Welcome. Maybe I'll keep it like this. So, you know, something when you're always, uh, you know, when you're tweaking stuff like this, I, I find that, you know, if you go back and forth a lot and you just keep on tweaking things, adjusting the properties of different items, uh, oftentimes uh, not, you can't decide on anything, right? You're just like stuck 
between this like ping pong in your head. Um, so when I feel that ping pong start happening, I usually just back away and I'm like, okay, it's good enough for now. And if I want to change it later, then that'll happen, right? All right, so what I'm gonna do here is we haven't really made any changes to the layout in terms of the positioning of our coffee cup and these two pieces of text here. Um, what I'm gonna do is unlock that and uh, change my text frames to be a little tighter because we don't need them to be as big as they are for sure. Let's put some more space between each of these here. I'm just going to make that a little smaller. Offset it over here. You know what? I had the idea earlier of maybe making this a two line headline here. Let's do it. Bold brew. If it's bold, let's make it bold, right? All right, so there's a couple things here that looks terrible right now, right? <laughs> um, so what I need to do is actually ch make some changes here. I want this to, uh, for one thing, there's, there's too much space between the lines. So let's go into our uh, character and paragraph settings here and find this little fella. This should do it for me. This is my letting. And if I just keep on clicking that button, that looks pretty good. And I also want to change uh, the kerning a bit here so that they, they kind of come across together. So I'm gonna, I want them to be lined up. I want the bees to be lined up, right? I want uh, all that other stuff. Uh, to be more pleasing right now it's it's just like you got this weird kind of setup going on uh, it's not what I'm looking for at all let's go ahead and tweak that all right we're gonna do tracking because kerning is locked All right, so bold is going to need additional tracking in order to achieve what I'm looking for. It's pretty good, it's pretty close. So let's go ahead and have a look at it. it needs to be bigger. <laughs> bigger and bolder all right there's 145 I'm thinking we can go maybe to 150 here so I do need to change my lighting a bit since they're kind of coming together now. And the shame is, you know, like, I don't know. I get so indecisive about stuff like this. And I mean, honestly, it's, you know, you can always think like, well, it's just 
it's just something for a live stream, who cares, right? But I want it to look good, you know? Let's add some more space between these with the letting here. All right, I like that better. And let's drop this a bit. Just for fun, let's have a look at our other coffee. You know, see, this is what I'm talking about, like this ping pong changing my mind here yeah yeah the awaken i i hear you um i tweaked that back and forth a lot <laughs> earlier and then i just kind of like left it be because it was one of those like indecisive things um gosh maybe i should keep this see i like bold brew with the bold but um i don't know I'm really indecisive about this stuff today. All right, well, let's keep it, it's fine. Maybe just drop it down a little bit. <laughs> Looks pretty good. Or maybe, hmm. Maybe, maybe I'll, I will make these two different colors. Just make this one like really white. And this one a little less. Each line. <clears throat> I mean, it's it's. It is it is bold. It is simple, which is what I want. I like the placement down below a bit more, but let's go up one. I think uh, this text is too big now. <laughs> let's take it down. 30's pretty good. Actually, I should just change the paragraph settings. There we go. And I won't have to keep tweaking that as I make adjustments. That's better. Yeah, that's a lot better. And actually, maybe, hmm. So with this color, that's a bit more tan or yellow. Let's add a little more color to it. Too bad I'm out of, out of coffee. <laughs> yeah, I originally sampled. I, I created a swatch theme from from the cup, which I, I've based a lot of this stuff on. Um, I, I I'm liking how it looks right now. I think I'm gonna just like leave it be. And actually, let's let's just lock it, because then it's like. If it's locked, I can't mess with it, right? So it's like a deterrent. It's like, Joseph, stop tweaking it. All right, so there's one last thing I want. Does InDesign have a black and white mode? Hmm. 
you know, I'm not sure. I've never used InDesign for uh, just like straight up black and white type stuff. But um, I mean, I suppose, hmm. I wonder if we go into our uh, document settings here, document setup. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Well, that isn't anything about color, is it? I was wondering if you could apply like color profile kind of thing to it. <laughs> yeah, so RB mentions that it does not. So I'm gonna stop digging around. Yeah, I mean, you, you could always just use black and white, you know, uh, as your colors, of course. Um. <laughs> All right, uh, the last thing I want to do here is just put like a little, little bitty bit at the bottom here. Um, you know, every ad has a little bit of something at the bottom. So I guess I'm going to put like, <laughs> I, I, I like to, um, I like to play with this stuff. So I'm going to put not for human consumption <laughs> down here. And I probably think that's a lot funnier than anybody on the chat does, but um, I love stuff like that. I'm gonna use agenda once again. Let's just do it agenda regular. And uh, oh, it should be, well, 12 is probably, I don't know, maybe 10 points and yeah, let's make it caps. And um, yeah, I need the, I don't want it to be black and just make it straight white paper. Paper, paper, paper. <laughs> so, I mean, there would usually be like, you know, like the, the company's logo and like maybe something about the product uh, in small print, but uh, You know, that is not what I'm going for. Yeah, there we go. Taking that opacity down a bit helps out. Actually, one more thing. And I know I keep saying that I'm going to leave it alone, but now I'm like, maybe I don't really need the drop shadows on that thing there. Oops. Definitely makes it look different. I don't know. What's the consensus in the chat? Drop shadows good or drop shadows bad for that text? A lens flare. <laughs> I'd have to go back into the Photoshop for that. I don't. I don't think uh, little InDesign has a, a lens flare. Bad. Derek says bad. So drop shadows are bad, or no drop shadows are bad. Hmm. Yeah. Let's have a peek. It definitely makes it look different, you know? 
And earlier I was putting drop shadows on there simply because, um, you know, just to try to add in some more contrast, you know. But, uh, yeah, let's, let's bring it back and just lighten it up a bit. I mean, it's fairly light right now. <laughs> Derek says drop shadow's bad. <laughs> yeah. So let's see, if I just take it to like 18, for opacity here. Yeah, just with, without the drop shadow, it's weird. It adds like a little... <sighs> yeah, it does look like it's floating. But, you know. And that's, that's part of the reason why I kind of was going back and forth between this cup and... Uh, where is he? in this cup right here, right? So this one, uh, uh, actually, gosh, I, I just really keep going back and forth on these two stupid cups because this one just is cleaner. Um, and it actually does. I mean, the, the little, the little foam here, the, little bubbles, the froth, you know, really works into this. I don't know, but it's bold brew, right? So it doesn't look that bold. Unless it is in a, an espresso, and then it's pretty bold, right? <laughs> I've got like these different variations. And I mean, that's something you could obviously do, right? If you're doing some kind of an ad campaign for a bold brew coffee, maybe you've just got like you know, different types of coffee. It's like, hey, you can use all these different types of coffee with Bold Brew. I think I'm gonna go with this one just because I, if it, it really ties this together a lot better than the other cup does. It's cleaner, I like it. I like it much better like this. I'm not sure, again, about, these guys though because now I'm like oh are they too close to the coffee cup now because obviously things are a little bit different once I shift this around Clarissa mentions <laughs> likes the cup with the top down view yeah I think I do too I think I'm good with that. Yeah, so at the beginning of the, the stream, I you know, did some masking in Photoshop, some rough object selection and, and things like that. But uh, this one came out a lot cleaner. <laughs> yeah, so top-down cup is better for flat design, but then no drop shadow. It's so slight though, right? It's such a slight drop shadow. Um, look at it go, um, Yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. See, that's the thing, like you can create variants of this, right? So, you know, I could always create additional pages inside of my InDesign layout. Gosh, maybe that's what I should do. Maybe I should do one for both, right? As Sean mentions, it's not bold coffee, too much milk. And so here's here's the thing. I don't know if that's milk. I think that's just an espresso, right? And it's just just the, what's it called? The crema, the, um, the frothy sort of, um, you know, because you make an espresso and you do get that color that comes out, you know? And that, that's kind of what I was going for with this sort of yellow tan up here as well. Let's go ahead and just, let's make everybody happy and just create a new uh, variant of this. That was a strange noise. I don't know what that was. <laughs> All right, so here we are in number two, layout number two. 
layout number one. And then in number two, I want this a bit closer. So now we've got like a whole campaign going on, right? So let's see. If I do this, I should be able to check out both of them. So there's that one. This is really perfect, right? Because now I've got both. So I don't have to, it, it completely like removes any like hard decisions from what I'm trying to do um, because I've got both of these, um, both of these ready to go, right? And I, I do like certain things about this one. I like how it ties. I mean, I, I did, it, it's so close to the actual bold color of the coffee um, in that one, but this one, it ties in so nice to this aspect of the ad. Um, they're both good, but yeah, this one, yeah, I, I think I definitely would need to replace this particular cup with something else um, with more of a drop shadow. Uh, somebody mentioned, can't remember who it was, that it looks like it's a bit floaty right now. Um, yeah. But, you know, these are just stock assets. So I could find different cups elsewhere. And this one was rough too because the, oh, actually I could bring this up. I think I still have Photoshop open. Yeah. Yeah, so here we go. There's, oh, I flattened everything though. That's right. How about this one? I still got the original here. So let's disable this mask. Yeah. So we could always, I don't know. We could do something in, in Photoshop, but I don't know. I usually stream these for about an hour and we've hit it. So um, perfect. I like these to only last. I don't like these to last too long, right? Uh, if they go on too long, then it's sort of like, I don't know. It's like when you do stuff, like you can see above me, I've got some of my LinkedIn learning courses up there. And most of my LinkedIn learning stuff is with Adobe Animate. But, um, you know, I, I teach at the university level and I teach uh, design students and advertising students and PR students, all sorts of Adobe software. So we do InDesign, we do Photoshop, we do Animate, we do all sorts of different stuff. We do the video and audio apps, Premiere and Audition and everything. So, <laughs> you know, when you're, the, my point, what I'm trying to get to is when you're when you're actually going through and creating like directed like instructional content for like a LinkedIn learning course or something, you know, they want you to keep it like controlled, right? Like five minutes or so per video. Um, and it's been strange doing these live streams because it I I initially started doing this. Um, you know, sort of with that in mind where it was like, no, I got to keep it like really precise and everything. But, you know, it turns out they're much more relaxed. Um, so, but I do still try to keep them about an hour um, for the sake of the replays and everything. Anyhow, yeah, we're good. I'm happy with this. Thanks for the feedback, everyone, uh, and the engagement today. You know, thankful for that. Uh, super great to have you all here. And um, yeah, I'll be back next Wednesday. And what am I doing next Wednesday? I think we're doing some video stuff, actually. Um, let me check out my Behance profile. Oops, oh gosh. Sometimes touchpad is great. And sometimes touchpad is <laughs> a little squiggly. Here we go. Let's pull that over. Yeah, so here's my Behance profile here. And uh, yeah, if we look down, oh, here we go, work. So if you go here, we can see my, my streaming schedule. And I update this every week or two. Um, so I'll probably have to update it after this because 
Uh, we did some green screen stuff last week, which was fun. And uh, this week we're doing print ads. And again, Wednesdays at eight is generally when I do these. Uh, so yeah, billboard replacement techniques. We're gonna do some, some motion tracking inside of After Effects. And we're gonna re replace a billboard in a motion video with some, an actual billboard of our own creation, ad content of our creation for a billboard. And then we're gonna do on July 14th, some voiceover audio production. Now some of this stuff might change. And if it does change, I always change this. Um, yeah. So anyhow, I hope to see everyone popping in next week and the week after and so on and so forth. So I guess that is it for the stream, everyone. Uh, Again, thanks for joining, and I hope everyone has a great day, good week, and I'll see everybody later.